Hi guys and welcome to the 40... no, where are we? 1300s. Hi guys and welcome to the 1300s. So far all these medieval looks I've been doing haven't been the most attractive looks. I'm not wearing any makeup and my eyebrows are not done so please, I'm sorry, please try and ignore the eyebrows. Um, yeah, definitely don't feel my most attractive right now but this is the Middle Ages for you. Uh, don't know what's going on here either. So I am now continuing on to my next chapter of the rulers of England. In my last video, the last king I talked about was King John. So I am now continuing on from King John and I'm doing the next line of kings, which are Henry III, Edward I, Edward II, Edward III and Richard II. These are still Plantagenet. 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 I find that word so hard to say and I have to say it so much. It's not really a word I can just skip over because there are so many Plantagenet kings. So if I ever say that word, pronounce that word incorrectly, I do apologise. I really struggle saying that word. So um, yeah, these are still Plantagenet kings. Before I talk about these kings, I'm just going to touch upon the fashion in the, in the, um, keep forgetting where we are, in the 1300s. Um, the fashion back then was very form-fitted. Clothing was tight-fitted, which was very different from the years previous. In the previous years, the tunic was what was popular and this just went over the head, it didn't fit the form at all. So now clothing actually fit the form. This was achieved by using buttons, depending on how rich you were, depended on how many buttons you had. And there was um, a law as to how many buttons you actually allowed. So if you were very rich, you would probably have buttons from the very top of your garment all the way down to the bottom. The dress that was worn back then was called a coat hardie and this was a tight fitted dress with long sleeves which would have buttons running down the middle. Again, depending on how rich you were, depended on whether your dress had buttons or not. Men would wear a doublet which was a tight fitted garment with padded sleeves and they would also wear these sort of like um, leggings, I would say leggings, which were called hose. Also what was very popular back then was to wear a garment with two different coloured fabrics on either side and they would part down the middle. This look was very popular in the 1300s and continued on to the 1400s. Another look that was popular was the lyri pipe. It's basically a hood with a very long tail on it, it's the only way I can really explain it. The tail fit no purpose at all, it was just what they considered look good back then. And so that was the fashion in the 1300s and now we're going to continue learning about the rulers of England starting with Henry III. Henry III was the son of King John. He was nine when he became king. At that time most of England was in the hands of rebel barons led by Prince Louis of France who at the time of King John's reign was supported as the new King of England. As Henry III was too young to rule, the country was ruled by a regency who defeated the rebels and forced Louis to leave England. In 1234, Henry took over as king. He was a weak man, dominated by churchmen and easily influenced by his wife's French relations. Henry's barons were outraged by Henry's financial commitments to his foreign friends. The barons later issued the Provisions of Oxford in 1258, limiting the king's power. The settlement began to break down in 1260 and Henry seized the opportunity to renounce the provisions. Henry's refusal to accept them led to the Second Barons' War in 1264. Simon de Montfort, who was Henry's major baronial opponent, won the Civil War at the Battle of Lewis in Sussex and captured Henry and his eldest son Edward. Montford then ruled England in Henry's name. In May 1265, Henry's eldest son, Prince Edward, 
escaped captivity and defeated and killed Simon de Montfort at the Battle Evesham, Henry III was now too weak to rule and so left his son in charge of the government. After Henry III's death in 1272, his son became King Edward I. Edward I was a very good warrior and was a noted castle builder. He wanted a rule over all of Wales and so ensured his son, Edward, who would later become Edward II, was born in Wales, making him the first Prince of Wales. In 1296, Edward invaded Scotland and stole the Scottish crown jewels. Scottish leaders like Sir William Wallace and Robert the Bruce fiercely resisted against Edward I's rule over Scotland. Edward I also formed the Model Parliament in 1295, bringing the Knights Nobility, Lords and Commons together for the first time. He married Eleanor of Castile and then later married Margaret, daughter of Philip III of France. He died while travelling to Scotland to fight Robert the Bruce. His son Edward II then took the throne. Edward II was born in Wales, becoming the first Prince of Wales. He was a weak king and was influenced by Piers Gavinston. Edward II and Gavinston were extremely close friends. Gavinston was originally banished by Edward I, who believed Gavinston was trouble for his son. But when Edward I died, Edward II brought Gavinston back and made him the first Earl of Cornwall. Edward II was nothing like his father and upset his barons who said Edward II was arrogant and greedy. The barons attempted to restrict Edward II's power as king. Hugh Dispenser the Younger was another close friend of Edward II. This picture, by the way, isn't mine. It's one I found on Google. All the pictures are not mine. They're all um, images I found. But I really liked this image. It does say that the, it is an image of Edward II and Gaveston, but um, I think it makes sense it being Edward and Hugh just as much as um, Edward and Gaveston because I believe the friendship he had with both men were very similar. So um, in this case, I'm just going to use this picture as Hugh and Edward. Um, so yeah, anyway, Hugh was a horrid man he was known as a monster who unlawfully killed a Welsh nobleman, but this would later lead to his downfall. Edward's wife, Isabella, especially hated Dispenser. When Edward II invaded Scotland, he was defeated. Edward was then held captive in Berkeley Castle in Gloucestershire. Edward's wife, Isabella, finally had enough of her husband and raised a rebellion with French aid. She and her lover, Roger Mortimer, defeated and hanged Dispenser and his father, Dispenser the Elder, and Edward II was forced to renounce the throne to his son, Edward III. Edward II was kept at Berkeley Castle until brutally put to death in 1327. Legend has it by having a red-hot poker thrust up his anus. Ouch. Edward III was only 15 when he came to the throne. Edward II's wife, Isabella, and her lover, Roger Mortimer, ruled as regents for three years until Edward III rebelled and had Mortimer hanged. Edward III proved to be a popular king. His ambition to conquer Scotland and France plunged England into the Hundred Years' War, beginning in 1338. Edward III and his son, known as the Black Prince, were the most renowned warriors in Europe. They won at the famous Battle of Cressy, where they defeated a much larger army of French troops led by Philip VI for France. Edward III began an attempt to rule Scotland, winning a victory at Halidon Hill in 1333. During Edward III's reign was the outbreak of the bubonic plague known as the Black Death, which killed half of the population of England. During Edward III's final years, his son John of Gaunt acted as head of government. Edward III's eldest son, Edward the Black Prince, died before him, and so the throne went to the Black Prince's son, Richard II.
Richard II was the son of Edward the Black Prince and the grandson of Edward III. He was crowned at the age of 10. In 1138, Richard II was faced with the Peasants' Revolt, a result of the imposition of poll tax in 1380. It was led by Wat Tyler. Wat Tyler was stabbed and killed at Smithfield by the Lord Mayor of London. Richard II believed strongly that God was on his side and the death of Wat Tyler was proof that he was untouchable. Richard II faced conflicts with Parliament because of his fondness for his favourites and in 1388 the baronial party headed by the Duke of Gloucester had many of Richard's friends executed but in 1397 Richard had the Duke of Gloucester murdered. In 1399, Richard's cousin, Henry Bolingbroke, Duke of Hereford, returned from exile to lead a revolt against his cousin, who was Richard II. Richard II was overthrown by Parliament and imprisoned where he died. Richard's cousin, Henry, was then crowned Henry IV. Thank you very much for watching. The footage for this video was filmed at Warwick Castle, which is a beautiful castle. There's always loads to do there and if you haven't visited before it's definitely worth a visit if you want to see more videos from me please subscribe and i will see you in my next video bye